To a place where I felt at home Take me back to a day when we weren't alone Take me back to an age when the world felt small Country, the combination generates a happy vibe. Ghana has a beautiful hinterland, sunny beaches, a rich culture, bustling towns, friendly residents, plenty of animals, and easy access to all sections of the nation. Northern and Southern Ghana are very distinct, with differing religions, topography, and cultures. But you'll still have the impression that the country is a unified whole. If you've never visited Africa, Ghana is renowned as Africa for beginners. Despite its modest size, this West African country has drawn a large number of immigrants and visitors. Tourists love traveling across the nation since the transportation system is quick and convenient. Ghana is divided into 14 regions, however, each region is blessed with beautiful sights and sightseeing and adventures. Accra is the country's capital, largest metropolis and transportation center with a population of more than 2 million people. If you do not pay a visit to Accra, your trip to Ghana will be considered incomplete. Accra exudes a sense of warmth and friendliness. Whether you're traveling for business or pleasure, alone or in a group, Accra has something to offer everyone who visits it. It is impossible to visit Accra without taking in some of its most stunning sights. These include the nearby beaches such as Labadi Beach, the National Theater, National Museum, Independence Square, and the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial, all of which are must-sees. When you next visit Ghana, you might wish to pay a visit to the country's capital city, Accra. With that stated, let us take a look at the top 10 tourist destinations in Ghana that you should. Number 10. Volta Regions Volta is one of Ghana's 16 administrative regions and its capital is Ho. It is located to the west of the Republic of Togo. The territory is multi-ethnic and linguistic, divided into 25 administrative districts and includes groups such as Ewe, Gwan and Akan peoples. The Lolobi, Likpe, Akpafu, Bwem and Nkonya are among the Gwan people. The new Patriotic Party formed this region out of the Volta region in December 2018. Lake Buri Floral Gardens, Lake Cruises with Live Music, Kayaking, Monkey Sanctuaries, Fishing, Waterfalls and a Kente Weaving Hamlet are all available. If you are feeling adventurous, you may trek to the summit of Ghana's tallest peak, Mount Afajato. While you're there, visit Shy Hills, a natural refuge, and Zavi, a bird viewing sanctuary. This is one of Ghana's most beautiful regions and it should not be ignored. Number 9. The Mania Palace are you a tourist interested in culture and traditions? Don't miss out on visiting the traditional communities in Ghana, particularly the popular Ashanti region. The Mania Palace, which means the Assembly of the People in Akan, is the formal house and seat of Asantehene of Asanteman. It is situated in Kumasi. The original palace has been converted into a museum. The new palace, which is next to the old one, is utilized by the current Asantehene, Otumfo Osei Tutu II. It was erected by Otumfo Opuku Ware II. The Ashanti region is home to various chiefs, and the good news is that they still hold their chiefs in high regard. In addition, chiefs play critical responsibilities in the development of the country. Needless to say, a visit to Mahia Palace will allow you to fully appreciate the various traditions of the Ashanti region. You'll also have the opportunity to meet and connect with the distinguished chief. Number 8. 
Number 8. Kakum National Park Kakum National Park, located on the coast of Ghana's central region, has a total size of 375 square kilometers. Although it was established as a reserve in 1931, it was only in 1992 that it was designated as a national park, following an initial assessment of avifauna. Tropical vegetation covers the whole region. The distinctiveness of this park stems from the fact that it was founded at the initiative of the local people rather than by the State Department of Wildlife, which is in charge of wildlife preservation in Ghana. It is one of only three spots in Africa with a 350 meter or 1,150 foot long canopy walkway that connects seven treetops and gives access to the forest. Kakum National Park is an excellent day excursion from Cape Coast. There are 40 animal species, 300 bird species, and over 600 butterfly species found here. Make arrangements ahead of time for a park ranger or guide to accompany you farther into the park. Number 7. National Museum of Ghana Ghana's National Museum is located in Accra, the country's capital. It is the largest and oldest of the six museums managed by the Ghana Museums and Monument Board GMMB. The museum building was dedicated as part of Ghana's independence celebrations on March 5, 1957. Princess Marina, Duchess of Kent, conducted the formal opening. A.W. Lawrence was the museum's first director. There are several exhibitions dedicated to the Atlantic slave trade and the African lives that were irreversibly altered as a result of it. This is the place to go if you want a solid explanation of modern-day Ghana's anthropological variety. Learn about the people of the past and present, view traditional household artifacts, art, and royal Ashanti instruments, and learn how to weave kente cloth. Number 6. Elmina Castle The Portuguese built Elmina Castle in 1482 as Castelo de Sohore da Mina, often known as Castelo da Mina or just Mina in present-day El Mina. It was the earliest commercial station on the Gulf of Guinea and the oldest European structure in 1642. The Dutch allowed the slave trade to continue until 1814. The Dutch Gold Coast, including the fort, became a British property in 1872. Elmina Castle is a historical landmark. UNESCO has designated the castle as a World Heritage Site. It is also a popular tourist destination in Ghana's central region. The opulent lodgings where the Europeans resided can be seen from the top, and then you can see the dungeons below, where one cell could hold up to 200 people. It's a fascinating look at the tough period in African and European history. Number 5. Kwame Nkrumah Mausoleum It is dedicated to Ghana's late president Kwame Nkrumah. The memorial complex, which was inaugurated in 1992, is located on the former British colonial polo grounds in Accra. It has a land area of 5 acres. Don Arthur designed the mausoleum, which holds the corpses of Kwame Nkrumah and his wife, Fafia Nkrumah. It is the site where Nkrumah issued Ghana's independence proclamation. On the site, there is a museum with artifacts from various phases of his life on exhibit. The structure is designed to resemble an upside-down sword, which is a symbol of peace in Akan culture. The tomb is covered in Italian marble from top to bottom, with a black star at the apex representing unification. The inside has marble floors and a marble tomb monument resembling a mastaba, 
surrounded by river washed pebbles. The burial is illuminated by a skylight at the top of the mausoleum. Water, a symbol of life, surrounds the tomb. Number 4. Cape Coast Cape Coast is a city in Ghana that serves as the headquarters of the Cape Coast metropolitan area in the country's central region. It is also a fishing port. It is one of the most historic cities in the country and is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is the site of the Cape Coast Castle and is bordered on the south by the Gulf of Guinea. According to the 2010 census, the city of Cape Coast has a total settlement population of 169,894 individuals. Fante is the indigenous language of the inhabitants of Cape Coast. It was here that slaves were transported, imprisoned in the fortress of the town, and then loaded onto ships bound for the New World. What you'll witness and experience here will have a profound impact on you. In today's world, Cape Coast has a hipster atmosphere. The streets are lined with historic colonial buildings, making for pleasant strolls. Use Cape Coast as a base for exploring Anumabu, Elmina, and Kakum National Park, all of which are accessible from the city. Number 3. Artist Alliance Gallery The collections of modern and fine art at this gallery will wow you with their variety and quality. The three-story gallery, designed by renowned Ghanaian artist Ablade Glover, is a treasure trove of kente dress, furniture, asafa flags, masks, and one-of-a-kind metal sculptures, among other things. It is possible to see practically every notable Ghanaian artist represented, and almost all of the items on display are for sale. Number 2. Accra Accra, Ghana's capital and largest city, with a population of somewhat more than 2 million people, is a city filled with personality and exudes a welcoming atmosphere. Accra has plenty to offer everyone, whether you're traveling alone or with a group, on a long-awaited yearly vacation or just visiting for business purposes. The several beaches around the city, notably Labadi Beach, are very popular with visitors. Accra is home to the National Museum, which houses many of the country's historical artifacts and is open to the public. In addition, the National Theatre, the International Trade Fair, the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial, Independence Square and the W.E.B. Dubois Centre are also worth a visit. There are marketplaces, fantastic cuisine, wonderful music, and a lot of traffic wherever you look in this city. A visit to one of Tashi's numerous coffin stores will round off your experience. Number 1. Labadi Beach Labadi Beach, often known as La Pleasure Beach, is the busiest beach on Ghana's coast and is the most popular tourist destination in the country. It is one of Accra's beaches. It is cared for by the city's hotel industry. Labadi Beach is located in the greater Accra region of Ghana in a town named La, which is also known as Labadi. It is located near the town of Teshi and is a famous tourist destination. Those who are not staying in the hotels are required to pay an entrance fee. Over the course of the week and on weekends, reggae and hip life performances, as well as playback and cultural drumming and dance, are common. There is delicious cuisine and cocktails available. 
Aside from going to the beach to have a good time, many go to the beach early in the morning to work out, especially on weekends. Trust me, you are in for a treat. We have come to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. I don't want to be a part of it. Can I just get some space? I don't have the heart for this. I can't be picking up the pieces, fixing scars from this. Is this an argument? Or